What is going on, everyone? Uh, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's NHL slate. Uh, it's a big, uh, big night in the NHL DFS streets because they are running this 888 uh, buy-in, which I don't think I've seen before, and it's 100000 for first. So we are going to take a shot at it. We uh, played a satellite last night, and I came up just a little bit short, but had a good night overall. Um, in the NBA, so I'm gonna I'm gonna gamble. I'm gonna take a shot at this, and I'm gonna go over my process um, for at least how to do an early look at this slate. Now, again, you know you got to watch for line changes. You got to watch for anything late. But um, again, for those of you joining me for the first time here in these videos, I, mean, I try my best to give you a process that is repeatable, uh, slate after slate. But I also want to apply the process to a particular slate. I think that's actually a pretty subtle difference. Um, so we're going to do that. And again, I continue to build my process every day. I try to think of new things to do. Because if I knew that there was something 100% correct to do, then I would just do it, everybody would do it, and the game would be solved. And because that's not the case, that's what makes this sort of fun. All right. So... Let's take a look. First, we're going to look at the uh, the team totals. Then we're going to look at my sheets. Then we're going to build a hand built lineup. And then we're going to access Saberson and see if we can't uh, improve on that. And uh, that's the process that I'm going to be using probably about 15 minutes before lock tonight. Uh, but again, it's the same overall thing. First, well, first of all, we look at the team totals. Pittsburgh Rangers. They're both 3.6. St. Louis 3.6. That's interesting. Nashville 3.5. Florida 3.6, Vancouver 3.4, Van oh my God, Vegas 3.5, and there are the Edmonton Oilers with 4.4 and Winnipeg with 3.8. So you do have Edmonton standing out over the field in a 10 o'clock start. So what this means, uh, what this means to the average man, so to speak, is that if you're smashing from the early games, do not count your 100,000 yet. Because there's always the you know the Gretzky Messier uh, the Gretzky Messier who was the other guy Jarvis no, who else was on that line uh, that can come back and get you uh, at ten o'clock. Uh, not to mention the ten thirty hammer where you get Winnipeg, who's actually the second, are they the second biggest implied total? I guess they are at three point eight. So uh, very very fun slate. I might actually go live to sweat that. Uh, especially if I end up playing these Edmonton guys, so I'm definitely going to have a shot with that. Anyway, um, let's take a look at my sheets and see what they look like. I think it's very, very early, um, but let's take a look. So again, what I do is, you know, this is the way my projection set, set looks to me. You know, you can go into true DFS and it will look a little bit different. Um, should I pull this up? I may as well, actually. This is Roto Grinders. Uh, so if you are a true DFS subscriber, you'll go here and you'll I'll just see the difference the way they look. Uh, let's see. Eh, it looks like it's taking a little bit of time to load these. Oh, here they are. Uh, you'll see that I have my own set and also Goldie has his. But this is the way they look here. A little bit, I mean, they're the same, but they just look a little different. And you can download these to a CSV if you want to screw around or whatever. So here, like Goldie has his own, etc. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look using mine. Actually, um, I, I'm just used to looking at my sheet. And the first thing I do again is I step back from this, and then I just say, okay, who's rated near the top that plays on the same line or that plays on the same team at least? And when I say near the top, I'm not judging by point per dollar yet. I'm using Sheets Value Score, which is my own way of kind of ranking these guys. Um, and I just like to see who rates well up here that's on the same, that are on the same teams. So the first thing you'll see right off the bat is you have Edmonton, Edmonton, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, 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 by the way. So three Pittsburghs, three Edmontons, all dominating the top of the food chain. However, the other thing that I see, there's two, two, well, two things that are interesting. One is that one of these Pittsburgh guys is 2,600. Um, so 
he is on the first power play line, so it's going to make your Pittsburgh stats a little easier to get to, or a lot easier to get to. The next thing I notice is that Winnipeg, you have a $4,900 guy up here, the Ellers. So if you play him with, say, Connors and who else is rated well over here? Sheffley and Velarde, they're all on the same power play line, I believe, as well. Actually, that's not true. Ellers is on the second power play line, so it's not quite as smooth. But you might have a shot at getting those guys in as well. So it looks as though, with it, with it, with really, really just quick looking at this, it's Edmonton, Pittsburgh, and Winnipeg. Those would be the three teams that you would try to stack. Is there anything else that I notice? Uh, well, again, this twenty six hundred dollar um, Pittsburgh guy is interesting. The other thing that's interesting is his that ridiculous ownership projection of eight percent. It's got to be higher. I mean, if he's twenty six hundred and he fits in all these Pittsburgh power play stacks. There's no way he can, he's not going to. There's no way he's this uh, unpopular in the lineup. So, uh, we'll 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 update that a little bit later. I do notice that the Kyle Connor less than ten percent. So maybe maybe you can play this Winnipeg stack. It's not doesn't quite project as well, but I imagine it'll be lower owned. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to build lineups with both uh, with Winnipeg. We're going to build one with Edmonton. We're going to build with Pittsburgh. And we're going to see if we can't, you know, what they look like, if there's any difference between them. I imagine the Pittsburgh one's going to be easier because of the 2,600. Next thing I look at is the goalies a little bit. I look for low for low priced goalies that rate well. So Logan Thompson, 8,300. I'd rather a little cheaper. Oh, here we go. So this is going to be the guy. Connor Ingram at 7K. Like if, if I have to play him, see what's cool about this one is he's playing against Pittsburgh. So I think that in most all of my Edmonton lineups or all of my uh, what you call it, Winnipeg lineups, certainly all my lineups going to Pittsburgh, I think that Arizona goalie is extreme leverage. Okay, I have to, I have to imagine the Pittsburgh uh, stacks are going to be popular. So uh, this is this makes a, a lot of stuff work. Um, other goalies, again, eighty one hundred Saros is always good for a smash. And then there's Corpusalo at 7,200. So th these would be the guys I've been looking at. Corpusalo a little less, you know, leveragey, and uh, and Ingram very leverage. So let's pull up the uh, DraftKings a DraftKings lineup builder. Let's see if we can't uh, make something of this. This is soccer. This is a dummy lineup I put together here. All right, so let's uh, let's first put in. Let's not put in Ingram yet. We'll put in uh, Corpusalo because I want to try to play Pittsburgh first. So we'll remind ourselves of the Pittsburgh guys. That would be Glensel, Crosby, Hootsinen, and Malkin for starters. So let's put these guys in. Crosby, Malkin, uh, Glensel. Pushkinen, put Crosby back up in center, please. Thank you. So we have these four guys from Pittsburgh. So it looks as though you can do this really easily because you have this 2,600. Now, do we want to fill in and make it a full five-man Pittsburgh and get the rest of that power play stack in, whoever that would be? Uh, Riley Smith wouldn't be him. We just have to figure out who that fifth power play guy is. But for now, we can leave just those four in. Now, I'm, I'm a little greedy, and I wonder if I can't get some of these other stacks. We can't get the Edmontons, obviously. They're going to be too expensive. But can, can you get something like a couple of Winnipegs and make this work? I mean, it's, you have 4,700 a man left. Let's just see if we can do this. Winnipeg, right, we start with Ellers. What did the defenseman look like here? Is there any good cheap defenseman? No, I don't see any. It's just a little annoying. We have Nurse. All right. Well, Carlson fills out the power play. And Nurse is cheap enough if you want to get a one off or something from Edmonton. Let's see what, what all those variations look like. First, let, let's just go with the, with the Pittsburgh thing. We'll go with the, the full Monty, the, the full five man. 
And then you'll have 4150 left. I think Ellers is probably a good one off here. And then we have to play two guys at 4100, one of them being a defender. You could play a one off of Darnell Nurse and then find a cheapo like like this guy I see right here. I mean, you don't want to fill in the whole lineup, but that was pretty easy to see. But let's put it in. I'm not probably going to play this at the end of the day, but just to show you. Play Darnell Nurse and then. Who was that guy from Chicago that I saw? 3,600. Well, there's Zucker at 3,600, but there were other guys, right? Just a $3,600 utility. Any, I mean, you could play anybody. Oh, you could play Velarde. Oh, my God, from Winnipeg. Oh, my goodness. It is going to take a lot of uh, – it's going to take a lot of uh, – I was say courage, whatever. This this is really sweet. I can't really do this, but uh, yeah, we're we're gonna. This is annoying because the projections are gonna change, and I'm not gonna end up with this. But I will say that this is a really sweet looking lineup. If in fact we uh, lock was in 15 minutes, which of course it is not. Um, all right, let's then try to build a an Edmonton lineup just for fun. It's always hard, but these guys are expensive. But so let's just start with it. So we beat McDavid, Drysidel, Hyman, Nugent Hopkins. All right. So those would be the four. Let's see how cheap we would have to be elsewhere to make that work. Edmonton. All right. Ugh, McDavid, Drysidel, Hyman, Nugent Hopkins. Ouch. So 4,080 a man. Now we're going to play the uh, that goalie, that 7K goalie against. Pittsburgh, that would be Ingram. Now we have 3350. Yikes. So one thing that you could do, now this is well, so we can't play Ingram because of what I'm going to do here. You could play that Pittsburgh guy as a one-off. And that makes life a little bit easier. Right? So what do we do in, de in defense in this type of build? I mean, we should probably just see if we can't play the Edmonton guy, and that was Darnell Nurse, right? I mean, I don't know if we can afford this, but, I mean, 29.50? Are there decent 29.50 punts? I mean, that would be nice if there were. So let's see, how far down do we have to go? One of them would have to be defense, and one could be anywhere. Um. What we'd have to do is just basically just sort, sort by point per dollar and see what we have. So this guy we already played. Velarde is not cheap enough, right? It's got to be 20, what do we say? 29.50 each. Well, you could play another guy from Pittsburgh if you want. The 2,500 is Jeff Carter. But I'd like to at least get somebody on a, on a, on a close to a top line. So this guy again, the Radish, who's on the first power play line. This is against Edmonton. So actually, this isn't bad. So we put radish. There are two radishes. And then somebody at defense who was, oh, this guy's not bad. This Ryler Riker Evans, for example. Just anybody, really. So you can play you can make these Edmonton stats. See if somebody is. Now let's try to build uh, Winnipeg's. That was the other one we were talking about, right? So let's just start with uh, guys we've already seen right so that would be it would be uh ellers velarde and then oops ellers velarde oh it'll be you have to pay up a little bit connor is day to day that's a little annoying and he's going to undergoing mri on monday that was yesterday it's injured. Uh, well, we have to see. But 
we'll put them in for now. What else from Winnipeg? Sheffley. And then if you wanted, we could try to play, and Morrissey's probably going to be too expensive. But try him anyway. Let's see what happens. Now you can do this, I think. Once again, you go back to the goalie. Now let's play. We don't even have to. I don't even think we have to play the, the cheap goalie, but let's just do it for now. Back to Corpusalo. Now 45 50 a man. I mean, like once again, you could always play that that guy from uh from Pittsburgh that went off. Right. And you could probably get leaving a little mini stack in here. You know, if you played this guy's gotta be really popular, right? I mean, if he's gonna be now you could pair him with another Pittsburgh guy if you want. That would be, I mean, literally take your pick. Crosby, Malkin is easy. And then pretty much anybody in defense. Just to fill this out, any of the guys that we talked about, back to Darnell Nurse, you know, and so here we go. So it's going to be very easy to build with any of these teams. That would be Washington, excuse me, Winnipeg, Edmonton, or um, who's the first one? Winnipeg or uh, Pittsburgh. All right, so let's go into Saberson and see what happens when we build there. So let's uh, upload. Now we could do it from the True DFS as well. Absolutely, let's try that. So if you do it from True DFS, if you have a subscription where it allows you to access the projections from SaberSim, like you see, we, we actually have a, an optimizer within SaberSim itself, within True DFS itself. So we got to just go to the um, NHL slate. Pull this up, and we can just upload it right to here. So let's upload, and when I have my own here, but technically, if you look, you should be able to select like here, two DFS, right? Two DFS, boom. And now we could just build instead of uploading it manually, which is, which is what I usually do. Oh, it's so funny. I have to, I can't build until I, what do I have to do? Do I have to change here as well? It's pretty funny. Even though I already changed them, they make me do it again. All right, whatever. So let's build, and we're going to build 50 lineups. And again, if you don't have this through true DFS, you can just do it straight from regular Saberson, which I you know, have over here. It's the same thing. Sorry about it. takes that didn't take that long. You guys can you guys can take it. So you'll see, by the way, there's like different projections, the Saberson projections, the true DFS, which are mine. Then Goldie has kind of an industry aggregate. All these are fine. And you could actually average these or whatever, you know. Let's see what we get. All right. So we just build the 50 lineups. And this is what I do next, right? I just want to see what it would look like if I just ran these through Saberson. I'm curious to see what we get. I imagine very similar. Yeah, okay, so looks like a bunch of Pittsburgh. Let's take a look. Uh, team stacks, 88% Pittsburgh, probably because it has all those Pustin and guys, that Pustin in the lineups. Um, so 88%. Uh, now, the next thing I'll look at is to see the stack exposure. And I do see, okay, most of them are either five twos or fives or sixes or fours, but I would probably – 
get rid of the four zeros, you know, and just, and it automatically rebuilds them for you. So we get rid of these, right? We get rid of these. Well, and this is like early, like early look, but this is like what it would look like, right? So you'd still be getting like all kinds of Pittsburgh. This is actually now 100% Pittsburgh. So what I would do next is I would run a contest. And you could either do it from the lineups that you have, you know, saved already. You could, you could, you could, uh, there's like a right click where you could pick the contest that way. Or you might be able to select it from here, contest sims. This is going to be, okay, so it does list these. So this is the big buy and the abominable snowman. So we'll just call this the 888. And it fills in the contest size, how much for first or whatever. And this allows you to, you know, to run your lineups against that field of, line, of projected lineups and figure out what your best, you know, ROI lineups are out of these, you know, 50 that you've, that you've made. Um, where's the kick save? Actually, it's called Tuesday 20, right? Tuesday 20. We'll just call it Egg and Me. Save these. So they're all here. And now we'll just hit Run Contests. One thing I could have done, by the way, is to change from Min Uniques from one to three, for example, and see if that would have made a difference. Uh, it still gets us almost 100% Pittsburgh. Now, if you did want to get different, I mean, you could play lineups with less Pustin in and jam the other Pittsburghs in. That's going to be probably a little bit unique. But there's a reason why. I mean, like that 2,600 just gets you a lot of savings. But I'm curious to see what happens when the um, uh, after we run these sims. So let's take a look. Instead of sorting it by Sabre score, which was our default here, right, we're now going to sort it by the particular uh, contest we're entering. So this is going to be MME risk adjusted ROI. And there we go. Now we're into something. So now it, what, it's, what, what this is showing us is that Pittsburgh is going to be kind of popular. So this Winnipeg idea makes a lot more sense. And so now you see it break down like this. Now, what does stack exposure look like? Five, two, four, threes, fives. I don't really want the five. Oops, I really don't want the five zeros, so we'll get rid of those. I actually don't want the four three threes either. Or the three three twos, or, or these, or these. I mean, I really want five twos, four threes, or sixes. That's, these are the pure lineup. So this is the one change that I make. Boy, oh boy, they really want me to play these stupid lineups. Maybe I should be listening. Three, two, two. I'm, I'm really fighting with you, Saberson, here. All right, so there we go. So now it looks like team stacks. See, Winnipeg, Pittsburgh, Chicago, which is interesting. And very little Edmonton. Very interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to save these to my contest. So let's... um. Download these from uh, from DraftKings. And now the only question is that I'll, actually I'm not going to save these because uh, I want to keep those ones that I built. I kind of like those a little bit. So what I will do though is I'm going to save these, but where I'm going to save them is uh, in my favorites. Actually, I'm just going to save these in an Excel file. And if I decide to go with this, I'll go with this. But I do like this for an MME build. I just don't want to get rid of those other lineups that I made. I kind of like them. So mm -hmm. let's, uh, where am I going to put this? All right, let's save to CSV. I got I to gotta call it something. We'll call it, um, I don't really need to do this, but because it does save it in SaberSim, but I just don't want to lose it. We're going to save this as, as something like MME. Sims. All right now, the other thing I want to do is I want to take a look at the big buy-in to see what that would give me. 
what I'm kind of looking for, I'm hoping for, is that the top rated risk adjusted ROI lineup for the penalty for the 888 is something like I may, and it is. I mean, it's got those exact five guys from Pittsburgh, except different, you know, it's got a different two man. It's got, um, who are these guys? It's got Carolina guys instead of the Winnipeg guys. Uh, that makes sense as well. Um, so we're going to, not going to save this one yet. Actually, we can. We're going to save this one to the. We're going to save this one to the. Uh, to the abominable snowman over here, just for now. Just so we have it. I'm going to download it. I know we did not fill them all. That's fine. Then we're going to upload these, and then we're going to be done. All right. So it looks as though it's a it's a very nice clean slate. You know what I mean? Like I think that that it's going to be one of those three. It's going to be Winnipeg. It's going to be Pittsburgh, or it's going to be Edmonton for my 888. And I think that for MME, uh, it's going to be majority of those three. But then you can screw around with stuff like Chicago as well. And again, that's why I use this contest sims to kind of, you know, I don't want to say answer questions really, but but I don't know. It just gives me a little more color on what types of lineups you're supposed to be playing. And again, I don't, I'm not sure if, if I'm going to actually go with that. But again, you know, you can decide for yourself whether to go with your original, you know, builds, which were basically 100% Pittsburgh. But it's, it says something that when you apply the contest sim settings, you get so much less Pittsburgh which means that these Pittsburgh guys are probably going to be really, really high up. All right. So that's the way I kind of think about the slate, at least this early. And we're going to do pretty much the same process though, as we get closer to lock. I'm going to try to deal with this when we go live later. Uh, I will talk to you then.